In this episode, I'm going to talk about authentication. Authentication which comes out of the box for Blazor Server app. When you create a new Blazor application, ASP.NET gives you an option to add authentication support for your Blazor app. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about how it creates the database, how it stores the user, what it does for authentication and how we can use authenticated user across your application. There are some advantages and disadvantages of going with this approach. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And then if you already have a Blazor application where you did not select, where you did not add authentication support when you created the Blazor app, then what you need to do to add this authentication support, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So let's first go ahead and create a Blazor app where we add authentication support. I'm going to select Blazor app here and name it as out of the box auth create i'm going to select blazor server app um, and then in the right hand corner you can see there is authentication and no authentication has been selected here so i'm going to click on change and it gives you an option to either keep no authentication individual user accounts work or school accounts we can con connect to your organization school organization and domain and everything and um, use active directory from there or you can add windows authentication if you have a blazor application which is meant for intranet application then uh, intranet network then can use this type of authentication I'm going to go with individual user account and uh, select store user accounts in app. You can also select cloud, but I'm going to select in app right now and click on OK and create. This will create the application for me. I'm not going to jump into the code right now. I'm going to uh, start the application and see how it looks like first. Here you can see unlike any other Blazor application, uh, we have register and login link on top of our page. Uh, let's click on login. He, uh, here it will give you a template. It's a razor page template where it gives you option to login into the system. We do not have any user to login into so I'm going to register a new user and select John Smith and create a password for him here and confirm password when i click on register it gives me um, an exception it's saying that we cannot open this database um, it's saying we cannot open this database because, because this database does not exist see if you want to go with this approach first you'll have to install SQL Server Express and that's where it stores all the uh, all the users and I'm going to mention this link in the video description you should install SQL Server uh, Express and it uses uh, for storing the information user information in it and our application this Blazor application uses Entity Framework Core you can see this application DB context uses Entity Framework Core to create schema and database and handle all the database related operations in your um, in your application. So it shows this create identity schema. If you've already worked in Entity Framework, you know how this works. Um, you get this um, migration script. You can see that in uh, data in migration folder, you have this create identity schema. Uh, migration and uh, if you want to do code first approach you'll have to apply this migration but ASP you can do that through Visual Studio but ASP.NET has made it super easy you can just click on this button and it will create the database and apply the migrations and it will create schema relationship tables everything it'll do everything for you so you do not have to do anything through the code now it's saying try refreshing the page so when I refresh the page, it will log in into the system with John Smith. So it created the database and schema. It created the user and logged in the system. So that's that's how easy it is to add authentication in your Blazor application. I'm going to re-log in 
um, just to check if this works. So I'm going to say John Smith at gmail.com. password here. I'm going to log in. You can see now John Smith has been logged into my system. So where is it storing all this information? Um, I'm going to go to app settings here. In app settings you can see there's a connection string which is added into the app setting and it, it's trying to connect to this server local db ms sql local db which is uh, a sql express server. I'm going to try and connect to this server and see how the schema looks like. Um, I will have to remove one of the slash here. And then it creates this database. It, it comes out with this weird name, which is the uh, solution ID, I believe. And uh, it creates a database. I'm gonna select that database and connect to it. And it creates all these tables for you. Um, in ASP, ASP not, uh, ASP.NET users table, you can see our John Smith user has been added. It adds the username, email address, and then it encrypts the password. So you don't have to deal with any of this functionality where you have to encrypt, authenticate, add user, connect to database. You don't have to do any of that. You can just like rely on authentication, which is provided by ASP.NET. It also gives you uh, a design to apply security by roles and claims. So if you want to go with that, if you want to um, add authorization where some of the screens only will be shown to some users based on their roles, you can definitely uh, add some data into these tables and apply roles and claims um, for your application. Okay, so uh, let's look at the pages now. Um, we saw that we saw that uh, it gives us a profile page where you can update the email address, password, two-factor authentication, and then you also have this logout button and then register and a uh, link page, login pages. So where are all these pages? If you go into this areas folder, you can see that there are pages folder, and here there are only two pages. You can see logout page and login partial page. The reason why you don't see all these um, register or <coughs> manage manage um, user information pages is because it when we created the application and added a package called as Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity UI. So all these pages are in this package so that you don't have to add this package or see this package in your application. And if you want to change the UI, you can always override these pages in these folders and create your own pages. So that, that could be done too. All right, so we saw how the user information is getting stored and we saw where the pages are. So how is it actually authenticating the user? Uh, I'm gonna start with startup page here, startup class here. And the one thing that I noticed is uh, now our app uses authorization and uh, authentication and authorization, which is mentioned into configure function. So this, uh, uh, if you create a Blazor application, this does not come out of the box. So this is something that you'll have to add. And then, it adds a uh, it adds it injects it initializes a state authentic authentication state provider uh, instance um, for our application. It's a scoped uh, instance, and this is the most important class because this is where the authentication happens. This is what gets passed to the application, and that's what we use to check if the user is authenticated or not. So um, it, it's of class authentication state provider and the definition, the uh, validation is written in this class, which is revalidating identity authentication state provider. Let's go to this um, definition here. And you can see that it's, uh, it has this function, which is an override function. Uh, and it's trying to validate authentication state async here. 
and it's uh, it's calling this validate security stamp async which is defined here and it gets user from our database so everything is written in all the packages you do not have to worry about authentication authentication is already written and it returns it passes authentication state variable this is very important class so it passes authentication state user to get filled with uh, with the user which is authenticated and this authentication state gets passed across the application to be used so how do we pass this authentication we saw that it's the validation is written here it's filling up authentication state object and user so how does it get passed the very first thing that you have to do you have to go in your app.razor uh, file here and here you'll have to say that now our application takes authorized route view it will use components which will use uh, authentication state provider as cascading parameters so these components cascading um, authorized route view and auth cascading authentication state these components take state authentication authentication state as cascading parameters and that's how you can use them across your application if the user is authenticated so where it's using where it's uh, where in ui if you if you look at here on top of the page right next to about link we have uh, authenticated user john smith and we have log out button here where when i click on it it logs out um so if i go to my shared folder here in this main layout which is um which shows these links if i open this you can see the about link here and login display components is using is showing this html so whatever you see these two links are written in our login display component this login display components is using three important components which you can see is authorized view and then there is authorized component and not authorized so when user is authorized you can, it will it should show this html this piece of code and if user is not authorized then it will show the register and login links here and if you want to show the user's name then you can see it's using this context at the red context which is the authentication state class that we were talking about this gets filled when you actually when you validate your user and uh, uh, assign user um, assign your user to this user variable here and then it's showing its name on top of our page here top of the page okay so uh, there is one more uh, component which is um, authorizing so when user uh, is clicks on login and if it calls an async function and it's taking a lot of time uh, over the uh, over the network then it, you can show this message saying that okay hold on a minute a uh, user is still authorizing so these are four main components that you can use across your application to show if the user is authorized if user is not authorized if it's authorizing so you can use these four components across your application and use this authentication state class to show what information has been filled when you validated the user all right so uh, that's all it's happening when you um, add authentication support in your blazer application there are some disadvantages to it though uh, though uh, i'll go through advantages first and then i'll talk about the disadvantages the advantages are it's very easy to set up we saw that it took us literally five minutes um, and then it's really good for it's very handy for small projects uh, if you're doing something uh, like school projects or yeah if your client is small where the users are less than um, 10 there are less than 10 users then this is perfect way to go you don't have to deal with authentication 
you don't have to design your own database. It designs the database for you, it creates schema, it handles, the only thing that you have to do is install SQL Server Express and it deals, it deals with um, handling the data. Um, it also gives you functionality to create um, new user and login. They all come out of the box. You don't have to design your register login and login uh, login pages. You can use the Razor pages which come out of the box and um, you'll be ready for your business logic. The disadvantages are you have to go with uh, Entity Framework Core ORM. You can't use any other ORM because this is ASP.NET's um, ORM. It gives you, it creates um, application DB context and then, uh, you know, applies migration. So you use Entity Framework Core. Um, we can't use any other ORM, so that's one disadvantage. It does not give you an um, API design. So if tomorrow, if I have to change my technology, I'll, um, I'll have to recreate everything. It does not create an API where I can authenticate across the API. I can call REST calls and authenticate my user. It does not give me, give me that freedom. It does not design it that way. And it uses all Razor, Razor pages. It does not use Blazor pages. Um, if our client wants full Blazor support, full Blazor pages, then it's still using old Razor pages which are defined in, um, uh, in UI package. So that is one of the disadvantages. If you already have user in your database, it's difficult to migrate um, if you're going with this approach. So we're going to cover all of that in our next episode. Uh, in next episode, I'm going to talk about how you can um, add authentication support in your Blazor application if you do not um, select authentication support when you created the application and you already have like custom database where you are storing your users and how you can uh, use these authentication techniques in your um, uh, in your Blazor application. So first thing we have to do is we have to in startup class we have to say um, you know uh, use authentication and use authorize uh, use authorization for this application. Then we'll have to inherit uh, application authentication state provider and uh, override get authentication state async function where we return authentication state loaded with the user. And in app browser, we'll have to tell our application that now our application is going to use some authorization related components. So, and it takes authentication state provider as a, a cascading parameter and it could be used in our application. So we'll have to, instead of route view, we'll have to use authorized route view and cascading authentication. And in UI changes, we'll have to use authorized view component, which can handle authorized non-authorized and authorization authorizing components and that's how we know um, that's how we know if the user is authorized and depending on that if we want to show some ui what kind of ui we want to show we can handle those ui changes all right so if you have any questions uh, you can reach out to me on twitter or facebook um, and yeah don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, this is far thanks for watching bye